Okay, everyone. Hello. This is Deb Chanel's 48 Swirl. That's where you're at in case you forgot. And I am going to get right on into this Real Housewives of Atlanta episode that aired on um, this Sunday, the 5th of uh, 2020. It was uh, titled Living on the Edge, Season 12, Episode 10. It was pretty much dry until the very end of the uh, last 15, 20 minutes of the segment they wanted to show us. Um, so let's just go on into it. We are picking up um, from where Cynthia and Kenya were divulging how Cynthia felt about Kenya running her mouth, coming out, telling the little small group or telling Cynthia and Candy, which Candy had already confessed to Cynthia that she had told uh, Mike was going to possibly propose tonight. So she needed to hurry up and get her boots on there. But, you know, Candy was talking about she was having a premonition and all this kind of stuff, intuition that he was going to pop the question. But, of course, nobody believed that from Kenya, and we just rolled on over her. But it was the setting that Nene had actually came in at, at the last part of last week's episode. So the women were pretty much, you know, finishing up, talking about it. Hopefully it will never happen again. Kenya would definitely keep her mouth shut going forward uh, when it comes to regards to anything coming up with Cynthia because they were just really discussing her and Cynthia and the whole big letting the cat out of the bag of what she possibly felt was going to go down but of course Nene looking all crazy and stupid and nobody's trying to feel her in and of course King is trying to basically hurry Cynthia up in a sense I don't know if y'all caught that but she didn't want Cynthia to really be expressing while Nene was there uh, to get a gist that Cynthia, I mean, that Kenya had tried to spoil something for Cynthia. Because then that just gives her more ammunition to spit at uh, Kenya when it gets time for her and Kenya to go into battle with one another on the show. Which hopefully will come up next Sunday. I mean, they alluded to that's what they're going to show next Sunday since they were on point with what they were going to show this Sunday from the previous Sunday. So... Okay, hopefully they'll be good at their work, go on and show us that particular episode prior, for the, prior to them going on a break or hiatus and then coming back later on, um, I guess, I think it's February they'll come back or something, sometime in February. But I know they're supposed to take a little break in between uh, getting towards the reunion. So uh, she was trying to like shut Cynthia down, like rushing her up saying, yeah, I got it good, let's move on. So uh, pretty much... Like I said, nobody really uh, brought Nene in to what had transpired prior to her getting to that point of walking in on them. They were finishing up the discussion, but like I said, they didn't want to clue Nene in about anything that uh, Kenya was pretty much trying to run the show and hog all the time for uh, filming and putting the salacious story on her side so they have to come back and finish up on, with her. So T Tanya pretty much got them all together and they um, called themselves, you know, hugging on Nene and this, that, and they're giving her a more welcoming reception. Uh, than what they gave her when she immediately walked in. Uh, like I said, Nene was feeling a little out of place. I saw us with everyone talking. And Nene was basically just sitting there trying to catch it, little bits and pieces. And trying to weigh in on what in the world they were talking about regarding Cynthia's engagement. Then, you know, the ladies, Tanya get them all together. They go with Tanya on a little bus ride to a summer event uh, where they're eating, getting some clarification or edification on what carnival is all about in toronto canada you know getting used uh getting geared up to the actual event but she took him out for a night of drinking and uh dancing and um a little uh food encounters that they were partaking of and then when they finally got back to the hotel um, you know, to refresh and get ready for the night and lay down and all that kind of stuff. Honey, Marlo, Candy, Kent, now, oh Lord, no, that would be in a, a, a fight right there. But it was Marlo, Candy, Yovana, and Nene, uh, sitting down. And then Tanya came shortly after, uh, after maybe say 20 minutes, the women had been in the room by themselves. And they were just sitting down discussing stuff. And Candy was like, you know, yeah, 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 all this, that, and the third. And, 
you know, uh, they were pretty much trying to feel each other out. And uh, they were talking about Kenya and pretty much her motives and, you know, giving a little discussion here and there. Then Candy is somewhat back on her little high horse asking Yovana about the snake. Is she the snake? Does she know who the snake is? And, of course, Yovana actually said no again. So I was incorrect. She had actually asked uh, y- Yovana twice. Uh, for me looking at last week's episode and, and a week before that. So this is like a third time and a fourth time would have been uh, with Cynthia and not Cynthia, but um, Portia and Kenya with her. That would have been the fourth time. So it was two times Candy had asked her. She definitely said no. She didn't know who it was. Da, 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 da. Then um, Tanya walks in and she's saying, you know, getting uh, reaccustomed to the ladies and seeing what they were talking about. This, that, and third. She's like, oh. I, I call Candy my uh, KMZ, you know, building on the um, vlogging site TMZ. And Candy was like, you think I talk a lot? I be spilling people tea. She said, honey, that's why I get all my information from you. So, um, <laughs> Tanya in her own sweet way pretty much said, yes, you are truly the walking and talking a uh, resourceful board that we come to when we want to find out in and everything when it happened how it happened why it happened you the source to come to because you pretty much going to tell us the truth uh how it went down and, and then everybody else can make their opinions and i'm like that's right tanya she tell her in a, a nice way she ain't nothing but a little bone carrier okay just take her job where it will and, and move on um, and then Candy asked Nene, did she send that note to Lil B. Scott, the same little, uh, card with the sentiments on it that she sent to Cynthia, did she send it to T, I mean to, uh, Lil B. Scott, because how did that exact same wording from your postcard or your little, um, congratulations card, card on starting a new business and this, that, and the third, uh, how did it end up on Lil B. Scott's website if you didn't do it? She said, well, honey, you got to talk about the people that uh, is less thought of that you wouldn't think would do something like that because if you're thinking I did that, you are definitely mistaken. That's not even my MO. That's not how I get down. And pretty much Nene was breaking it down to Ken like, no, baby, you running up the wrong tree. It wasn't me, okay? I don't talk to blogs. I barely talk to y'all. And when y'all come for me and try to ask me questions, you get zero, Donata, nothing, zilch, okay, I am Nene Leak, she said, I don't leak information, I'm like, okay, girl, go ahead, play on your last name, okay, and then we got all the ladies uh, trying to get in their costumes, this is the next day, uh, and everybody's, you know, trying to fill their outfits out, and of course, Portia and Tanya are talking about the outfits, and of course, Portia was like, Ooh, these outfits are so nice and then got Cynthia talking about her behind is a size 12 but her waist is a size 6 and she kind of get a little uncomfortable and Nene is kind of a little, a little bit paying her dust she speaks to her but that's pretty much it you can tell Cynthia feelings got hurt when Nene just rushed on by her but I guess Nene is biding her time when she wants to sit and talk to Cynthia because she might still have some residue negative feelings towards her and they just got to get that time where they talk to each other I guess but she mosey on out the room and says she's gonna try her outfit on in her room because she might need to have some things straightened out since they probably saw the little bit of butt in there she knew her butt was gonna be ass out so she knew she probably had to get a little bit more stretch a little bit more material in her little outfit but all the ladies look beautiful uh in their costumes when they finally got fitted but candy was a little apprehensive about you know getting into her outfit because i'm sure she had to give tanya all the the ladies sizes and hers as well prior to them getting there or you know tell you my ask them individually you know ahead of time you know what was your ideal size or you know this that and third so candy was feeling some kind of way you know but she went on in the dressing room tried it on she was pleasantly surprised everything was definitely nice on her and it fitted very well and uh she was like you could tell she was kind of surprised and she was happy about it because she started dancing in the mirror. I'm like, Candy, okay, come on out that mirror now. Stop feeling yourself. Come on, babe. So then, um, 
then Eva tells the women that are in earshot of hearing her that she won't be at the event. She has a charity event to attend. I'm like, Eva, 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 where are you going with all these different events? Is the charity event in Toronto, Canada, or you got to fly out and then come back? I mean, tell us. Give me some idea because I'm like, did they film this other scene that's coming up on Sunday already prior to you leaving? Because I just can't see you jetting back. That's just too ba much back and forth. But anyway, that's what her claim to fame is because she, she didn't really have any outfit to try on. Um, then Nene says she won't be there either because she has a uh comedy show where more than likely she's just hosting and she didn't have an outfit to try on either so those two women did not make it um but i don't know where and when they filmed the scene that comes up like they're still at the hotel or some some reason or where uh so i don't know how they're gonna get that to fit in that's gonna take place after this particular episode so um we move on from there the second scene goes into nini wants to talk to eva and it seemed like the, you could have dropped a pen in the room and you could have uh, heard that pen fall it had got that quiet because they're like oh hell i hope they ain't finna get them fighting up in here and then eva in her third trimester and you know with damn nini why you gotta do all this so all of them were thinking for the negative but to our surprise nini was pretty much beating around the bush and everything about eva and how they had got on a rocky start to where they were and they took it all the way back to when um eva had ran out the restaurant because marlo had said that i had told all the ladies and of course nini knew as well that she was living from pillar to post from house to house and this that and the third and you know she left abruptly and nini wanted her to come back and she was telling nini you know she'll talk to her off camera but that was pretty much it don't be on camera you know just contact her and she'll come back out on the outside but little did we know she had her husband or her fiance at the time michael there uh and he was telling her you know they, they were having a conversation that they didn't want on camera but when they found out after the reunion had aired nini had them on camera and they got upset about it and nini was trying to fake out a funk and trying to make like she didn't do anything wrong and this that and the third and nini knew she was wrong she just didn't want to apologize at the time because she was going into hiatus because the show was closing you know from the reunion so they really weren't going to be doing any taping and you know usually nini show out on every last reunion and she goes to a point where she ain't talking to nobody hopefully this time she'll be on good fences with everybody this reunion that's gonna come up very shortly uh but it just is what it is but nini kept going around the bush around the bush around the bush trying to deflect deflect when she was talking to eva because eva wasn't trying to feel nothing she was saying and you know she was standing up for herself which you should and then Nina just broke all the way down. Said, baby girl, look, look, I apologize. If I hurt you, I hurt you. I'm sorry. It wasn't my intention. I'm not truly. And pretty much she was like, I miss you. Come on, let's make up and let's get 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 this off, you know, get let's get over this, okay? So pretty much they hug it out and Nene kisses all over her face and all this kind of stuff and be rocking with her and feeling the baby and all this stuff. So they for the time being uh move on from that situation they, they hug and kiss it out everybody felt a little moment like they wanted to have a tear jerking moment and can't look like she was gonna cry i said like, can't destroy it now because you may want to be toting back this that and the third and then you want to break out in crying spells uh, I, we, I don't believe that anymore either so we move on from that situation um and like I said, Cynthia had pretty much left to go try on her outfit. So she wasn't present for that uh, little thing that had transpired. Then we got Tanya. Tanya wants them to hang out. And she wanted to give them a little bit more cultural uh, experiences being in Toronto, Canada. And she's talking about somebody. Like she wanted to go drop the women off a ledge in this 16 uh 168 feet build and, and you know nini making all these kind of cracks like are you crazy we black we don't do no hanging out on no ledge you know we we kind of like life <laughs> you know what i'm saying we don't believe in taking our own lives that may be for another culture another race but that ain't how the black folk get down now i pass on that pretty much then pretty much Porsche was saying she passed. Marlo said she passed. You know, and they were just being like not, uh, they were building Debbie Downers. They didn't want to do it and, didn't, and they weren't uh, scared enough to say they weren't going to do it. And of course, Eva ain't going up there, but she made one time. Like, yeah, okay, I, I might do it. I'm like, like who's going to take a chance on you? Are you kidding me, girl? Third trimester, hell, if you was in your first trimester, they wouldn't let you do that mess. So it just is what it is. So, um, 
Tanya was trying to get them pumped and saying, y'all got to experience this. Y'all got to bun. We got to bun. You know, it's just like a death thing. And, um... Push was like, nah, I don't think I want to die with y'all. I'd rather die with some people I really, really care about, like my family. I, you know, she was just, you know, playing it for it real. So I understood where she was coming from. And Cynthia, she wasn't too up to it either, but she kind of like didn't want to be left out. And, you know, Tanya's just that kind of woman. She's just like, oh, let's experience life. Let's just throw caution to the wind. But we're talking about if that thing snapped, like them bunch of cords be snapping, you going, you just going to just say you dead when you hit it, unless the pearly gates are just giving you a second pass and ain't just going to slow your fall down and just pretty much like lay you down on that concrete that you would definitely be heading for with uh, probably 200, maybe more uh per hour speeds okay but you know you got candy she's always uh, the chase uh thrill seeker or whatever and then you got kenya want to outdo candy and then you got portia trying not to be a wimp but you know she concede to like yeah i ain't feeling this but i'm with y'all because i'm around y'all age and, and 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 we do we supposed to be up and lit and stuff but I don't know. I said, just give her a can of Hennessy or give her a flask of her Hennessy and she'll be all right, okay? But it just is what it is. So then Yvonne trying to act like Tanya and, you know, it's annoying. You know, this was like after the fact, after they came from the... Um, the event and everybody did what they had to do because you know you I was just a hot mess but anyway Yvonne was trying to basically play like Tanya and you know it was just annoying me because I'm like Tanya be yourself I mean um Yvonne be yourself don't reenact somebody else you know it ain't like they did or they're a comedian you trying to you know roast them in a nice way or whatever I just didn't like that whole thing I'm like be yourself don't be nobody else only you can be you and that's it then we got Eva and Candy tells Portia and Kenya Nene made up you know and King was like what you know she was uh, unhappily surprised to hear that news because she wanted everybody against Nene. But Nene was, you know, had her plan in action. She was coming, you know, very calm and cool with the lady. She was saying the right words, which was apologizing. And they were like, cool with it. And Eva, and, and what, what's her name? Said, um, can you say, well, Eva, do you really believe her? You know, Eva, I think Eva just got to be shaded regardless. I think it's just in her nature. She says it before she really thinks about it because. She was just up there giving Nene hugs and, 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 and hugs. And, you know, they were trying to get back to that melting heart soft feeling place. And then Kenya going to, you know, try to act like she, Nene don't play her like a fiddle or a fool. And then she's going to be like, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say she was sincere. But, you know, I don't know because she had on her shades. I couldn't really see her eyes or her pupils. But I'm like, damn, Eva, you had on your shades too? I'm like, what the hell? Either you accept the later apology and move on or uh, just don't be, be like Kenya, hell. Just be a hater all your life or whatever. But um, anyway, like I said, you, you really can't trust Eva. She she, she just does what she want to do. You got to take her with a grain of salt, a uh, long-handed spoon. You know, just don't say too much to her because she might just devote all your stuff because she ain't on no even kill. And if don't, don't nobody know that in the crew, they ought to show and know that Eva ain't got it all up there. She say one thing, do another one. You know, maybe it's a mental disorder or something. I don't know. But. I don't mess with people like Eva. I just really stay very little around them and, and, and keep it moving, okay? And that's how we would be. Um, then you got Yvonne. Yvonne running her mouth, talking too much with Portia and Candy. And, you know, I'm just like, baby, they're trying to pump information out of you, so stop it. You're ahead of the game for right now. But if you don't come up with that information, we already know you out the door. Uh, then we got ne Nene and Eva. They stay downstairs, and they start to entertain one another. Then we go to the third scene. We got Nene um, and Eva. They go up the elevator uh, to a spot where they can actually see the women, you know, in their little whatever they trying to do out on that ledge. I don't know, be thrill seekers, thrill chasers, who knows, okay? But uh even though she can eat. Oh my god, I'm like, girl, you should be gaining so much weight. But that woman knows she can eat and it, it I've seen her after effect cuz she's gonna had the baby and whatnot and she's thin, trim and looking healthy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, that girl can eat on the way it go or whatever. But she's the most <sighs> appetite driven person when she's pregnant i mean it's, it's just i don't understand and they was up in this cute little 
uh, restaurant, whatever. It was like kind of like the sundial. And here in Atlanta, they have the um, spot where the, the the area that you're on, it'd be like turning real slightly in a circle. It was cute. But Nene, it kind of made her feel a little nauseated. So she wasn't, you know, too much uh, like she was on an even keel because she was asking um What's her name? Uh, Eva to, you know, be there for her in case she fall out or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Okay, Nene trying to play uh, frenzies for now. And hopefully she can stay there way because ain't no sense of Nene missing out on her taping time. Because every episode, you have to be in an episode to get paid. So, Nene need to straighten up and fly right and do like Marlo said. Get your money, honey. Leave that other drama alone. Bring drama. Don't be drama. Okay? And I was like, all right, baby. Then we go to that third scene. Uh, like I said, the women are actually 16 168 feet up in the air trying to do whatever uh you know, like I said, all this, all the Caucasian people, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna keep it real. They love that thrill seeker. They love being out there, you know, doing, you know, crazy things, doing pranks and all that stuff. But, you know, black people, we, we kind of scared. We ain't finna let you hook us up to too much and try to throw us off a ledge and think that's ha ha key key everything's fine. No, uh, uh-uh. you want to give somebody some high blood pressure? Go on and do that scenario that those ladies was doing that Tanya had put them up there to do, and all of them to partake of it. Except for Nene and uh, Cynthia. No, Cynthia actually did go, but Nene and Eva. And Eva, of course, she probably would have been up there too, and um, Nene would have been downstairs by herself. But like I said, you know. Mm-mm. When you get a certain degree of age, you don't throw caution to the wind. You don't test fate in any velocity or velocity at all or gravity, okay? You do that stuff when you're young and you're fun. But, you know, like I said, black folk don't really go, you know, hanging around no uh, graves. We, we, we don't not really into that Halloween stuff. We're not hot into those, uh, we call it hunted houses, curiosity, you know, all, all this stuff, tempting fate. We, we don't too much do none of that, you know. And I can see it, you know, because I'm black and I've hung around a lot of black people in my lifetime. And we just don't get that thrill-seeking chance on, you know, going chasing monsters and, and, and people that are known killers. You trying to expect where they are. No, nah, we don't do that kind of stuff. It don't sit right with us or our spirit, okay? So I'm just saying okay uh but moving on from that situation um let me see candy's out there you know she trying to punk everybody in a sense she think everything is real fun sitting out on that ledge and if you saw the uh show you should be in prayer like Portia seemed like she is but she's still out on that ledge just had a baby and she's throwing caution to the wind and uh Candy just had a newborn baby too by surrogacy and she you know she's just a little thrill seeker she loved the thrill of the chase she loves the competition and you know like I said Portia was you know doing the most she didn't really want to be out there but she was trying to prove a point I don't know what point she was trying to prove because that she would have snapped that's all she wrote same for Candy same for Kenya hell all of them that was up there but doing these different feats in the air trying to you know pull yourself away like you on some rock climbing a mountain or something that you know that's just not a good look okay unless you out and you do those things and you have definitely experience but experience don't catch you when them bars are not holding you you just in the mercy of the lord and like i said you can speed up your lifetime expectancies by doing a little crazy shit like this every day all day and then you know it wasn't your time to go it's just you tempted fate and you know your time wasn't written in the book at that time. But, you know, just what it is. That's what I feel about it. Then you got Kenya over there playing Superman. You know, spreading her, uh, you know, hands up like this. Like she been held up by a cop or somebody. And uh, they're saying, put your hands in the air. And that's how she doing it. She leaning forward. She just had a baby, too. Go take it. Make, make it make sense. Make it make sense, okay? Yeah, I'm going out there and bungee jump. You remember one? Well, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but it was an incident. Can't remember what state it was. Hell, it could have been here in Georgia. They had a little bungee jump thing, you know, going around in certain people's states. That shit snapped just like a rubber band snap. A, a, a break apart the person died splat that was it you know i'm like come on now come on why would you even get up on that 
anyway but it is easier what it is people gonna try to throw caution to the wind and really try to do some crazy stuff and end up dead all right but uh anyway move from that situation we got even myself talking to nini about the other girls she need to make up with uh which is portia she talked about portia in the uh, cl closet scene where portia was calling herself um being uh, attacked by Nene from the bat her belt waist came off and she was pregnant at the time and this then the third whole closet gate with the man the cameraman getting his tooth knocked out allegedly and um you know uh, Nene's temporary suspension that she's not going to own up to but we know those do have eyes to see and hear ears to hear we know what really happened on that situation because ain't nobody going to miss getting paid you know what I'm saying and live the lifestyle that she live no we need all the income we need to be able to uh, keep our income intact and revenue still flowing um, regardless of our actions but of course you know um bravo took their stance and it just is what it is allegedly that's how i'm seeing it over here um then we got candace telling uh what we before we finish up with eve and uh nini's talk she said she wanted to work it out with portia she she saw portia as a sister but you know they had went on this she's saying this in social media um nini saying that about portia and social media they're going back and forth they just like forget it we ain't got to tape anytime soon i'm gonna let you cool off uh and i'm gonna let you cool, let me cool off and hopefully in, in the midst of retaping and getting back with each other we can mean fences so that's where nini at and then uh eva said well, what about can you honey she was like uh, -uh portia good as go we can mend that friendship up uh uh can you no nah, hell gonna freeze over before she gets to call herself apologizing or being friends with Kenyon Boy. Nope, that's her arch nemesis. She's going to go to her grave with that little, a little diddly of harboring all those hateful um, feelings towards Kenyon. And Kenyon pretty much feels the same. Okay, so there's no love lost there and no healing that's be taking place. Then we got Candace telling um, the, the girls uh, just calling balls. You know, I don't know what kind of thrill seeking uh rush candy was trying to get that out on that ledge that was 1100 feet and then something uh, up in the air you know if you that thing broke girl girl you know what I'm saying? i hope you are insured okay because riley your blaze and ace will be needing your money okay because don't know if they you could they could stay in that house and be fruitful and be able to provide for themselves with tar at the ram or the ham without you can so you doing little stuff like that that don't impress me girl you need to slow it down okay because you have kids and you have a husband that depend on you all right but anyway you're gonna do what you want to do anyway but candy was trying to call her uh co colleagues that were out on the ledge with her corn balls we didn't really do anything i mean what you want to do you want to just jump and, and, and uh you call it push yourself off the ledge and and go on that scale on down the whole building until you get down to the first floor i mean i don't understand are you an assassin we don't know about it are you in some kind of training you want to tell us about or you know are you just an ordinary woman and and, and it just is what it is you just want to throw caution to the wind girl please anyway uh, we just gonna let you stay where you at and all your little things or what you could have did up there but they were like nah we ain't doing that up there okay but like i said there was some black person out of that idea there wasn't no black person i'm telling you but anyway um you and kenya and and portia up there doing some crazy stuff and all three of y'all got uh babies <laughs> what a sad thing to say moving on from there we got the ladies are looking at the pictures from when they were out up on that ledge and you know kind of like uh, if you went ever went to six slash you know when you first come in people be taking your pictures whoever want their pictures taken or they just take them at random and then you come back after you uh finish with the amusement part and you're leaving you can look at the pictures that they took of you uh and whatnot and you can purchase the, purchase them as well so i don't know if the ladies are getting into their pictures or not but just hear what it is okay then we got um Dennis sends Portia some flowers and, you know, she's all, you know, happy for the cameraman or whatnot. And then she calls her sister Lauren and tells Lauren, you know, what's going on, this, that, and the third. And, um, you know, it just is what it is. None of them really want to care about that scene or whatnot. Then Tanya, I guess she was expecting her boyfriend to show up or whatnot, but she wasn't expecting him to bring Dennis with her. Okay, so... 
it seems like Dennis and her boyfriend or uh, good friends or whatnot don't don't even know how that started or, or how it transpired. But they supposed to be good friends. So Dennis calls himself wanted to tag along because he wanted to put a ring back on um, Portia's finger and it pretty much seemed like the same damn ring. But he said he was gonna upgrade. But it, it just seemed like it's the same ring to me. I don't know. Um, then we leave that situation because. Um, Tanya was taken back that he was he showed up and he was telling Tanya he's trying to get his woman back this that, and third no you're trying to get some camera time son we know what you're doing uh over here Deb Chanel's world but it just is what it is getting good graces with them hopefully Portia I I don't know it's just this between you and Portia but we know over here Deb Chanel's for this world if it don't work out or whatever we won't uh Portia to be wearing her big girl draws we don't want to hear all this crying and carrying on we want y'all just a co-parent and be you know good parents towards baby uh pj and that's all we want to hear we want to hear about this other mess or anybody cheating or they don't do the same patterns again and again and again you know because all i feel once a cheater is always a cheater unless they go and do the work and how y'all transpired and, and Got together, got got on together, and got back together. Too quick for me. I don't think he learned anything. But how to learn how to not get caught again, probably. That's where I'm going with it, Dennis and Portia. Okay? But it just is what it is. Then we leave that situation. We get, okay, Tanya has got a nice setting. It's, I guess it's coming towards the end of the actual episode or the taping for that particular episode or scenes they're trying to get. She calls herself having a lovely drinks and bar and food and gathering for her old friends from Toronto, Canada. People she went to college with, people she went to high school with. Hell, she probably had people she went to nursery with, you know. <laughs> All her primary years, all her high school years, all her college years, and I don't know what other years she has, but she's mixing them all together along with the girls from the Real Housewives of Atlanta to mix and mingle with her actual family members and her friends, her friends of friends. Okay, she has some, she has a nice little gathering up there for them, and um, Tanya Man finally shows up. The girls are like, "Man, what you doing here this that, and third? And you know, he's greeting his girlfriend with open arms and love and all this thing. But you know, they had already got it going on they had already made you know love together when he showed up okay don't fake the phone bravo show us the real tea uh then you got dennis he well we ain't gonna bring him in but he does show up and he calls himself putting it down on one knee once again like again cheated already cheated whatever but anyway we need that situation um the girls are separated. You got uh, Cynthia, Nene, Eva, and Marlo. They over there making nice with each other. Um, Cynthia goes on to tell Nene about a little bit about her proposal. And, of course, Nene wished she was there. But they were both on, you know, non-speaking terms that they both were uh definite and very adamant about, you know, keeping it that way, status quo or whatnot. And then Cynthia's showing... Um, off her little ring she got or a big ring she got and then um sent it was either i don't forgot whether it, it was kenya or it was sent i'm not sent there but porsche had told um uh, what's her name I ivana to come from them so she can come with them and they have some drinks and they can talk so really them them uh ivana was like i don't know if i want to be with these girls because they shade i need to be over here with nini because that's you know where my bread and butter is coming from and i want to be you know in the mix with her and, and and be able to uh bring this thing home where i can solidify myself a full-time peach holder at least a full-time friend okay but then you know they slide her from over there with them and then um uh, what do you call it Portia, uh, Candy, and uh, Kenya goes on and try to give her the third degree and stuff. And Kenya, I'm telling you, she was very theatrical T tonight. I even laughed at her ass because she was going around now making like, <laughs> like slippery uh, serpents or snake type of moves, you know, when they, you know, slithering around. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> And see that what I'm saying? Kenya could do that all day long. I would not have a problem with her. She'll get the golden star for me, and I will back off her behind. And see, that's the type of humor that I'm talking about. And then be like, 
kind of nice nasty trying to pick her and, and still be smiling at the same time but she be trying to get the tea out of her that she wants that Kenya needs to come out a lot more and everybody I'm sure would turn another liking to her instead of disliking her and how she comes off when she's normally being portrayed on the show I mean she gave me everything tonight with her little antics that she was going through with trying to because I really thought Kenya was going to be really mean really um nasty towards her and you know just try to break her down real bad like i like we all know kenya can downright get dirty and nasty sometimes but <laughs> she was just doing that thing with her tongue and you know making those eye gestures and all this kind of stuff and i was like she was playing like a real comical pi person trying to get the tea or they were trying to pay that bad cop good cop thing and you know uh Portia, she wasn't getting nowhere with her, and she was kind of getting disgusted and this, that, and the third. And we don't want Candy to say anything. Just right, just, just don't say nothing. But she had to put her little two cents in. They still didn't get nowhere uh, with the uh, situation. And uh, let me see. I'm trying to think what happened after that. Charles, you remember what happened after that? Hmm. I, I kind of draw a blank, y'all. I'm trying, I'm trying, because I stopped, I started doing something else, and I wasn't taking any notes after this fact, but they were showing us promos of what's going to happen for next week, and that's when the real drama going to come out, uh, but, you know, Yovana was not playing, she was not uh, fooling with them women that night, she said, uh-uh, we are uh, pretty much, um, I ain't finna tell y'all nothing. I know who it is, but I ain't giving out no kind of tea. Y'all will find out sooner or later, sooner enough. She'll come around or he'll come around and, and say and bring it out to fruition. But I'm not the one that's going to do it. So they were kind of mad at her. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know what happened. Um, They just got tired of playing with her or trying to badger her. And they went on back to the party. And that's when uh, Dennis showed up because... um. Tanya had made some kind of speech of thanking everybody for coming and this, that, and third. And she wanted the men, her families together uh, from her growing up to where she is now and bringing the housewives women there to Toronto, Canada, Canada to uh, get their experience of living there and the culture. They can embrace the culture and definitely uh, be a part of the carnival uh mardi gras type experience uh celebration and then uh she was saying we got one person that know what love is really all about this that and third and she brought out dennis and i was like for real tanya for real you look girl that boy made a mistake and i am calling him a boy because you know men don't act like that not real men okay but yeah he come down getting on one knee but of course you know Porsche gonna say yeah because they supposed to be allegedly married at this time they got married in mexico but that's uh, you know we don't know uh, they might be taping for the show for next season who, who knows okay but we know if it was in mexico then they got married they eloped and only a set fewer people were there okay um just hear what it is uh no love lost we don't care to really participate or i don't care to really see her get married anyway you know because i y'all know how i feel okay but um that was pretty much it of that episode it was kind of here and or there but like i said they always uh seem like they want to play the interesting part um uh, at the latter part of the show at first when they first came back for the season they was giving us a little bit just on drunk street you know once the uh it was time for showtime they was like in it to win it you know it's like damn man, y'all come like that and ain't nothing but the first 15 minutes of the show okay i can't take it but i'm gonna ride i'm gonna ride 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 because i'm used to you know pretty much they getting us in sucking us in sucking us dry until the last 15 20 minutes then they're gonna pump everything up and make us want to watch the next episode right but like i said from the beginning of this video it, it really didn't get pumping until towards the end and uh it really was nothing that major major that happened only that nini kind of uh men's fences with eva and she seems like she's gonna do the same with porsche's porsche gives her the opportunity and she's definitely gonna try to mend fences with cynthia so that's a good thing and she never really was out with candy anyway so 
then you know who she got to talk to next and she don't care about kenya and kenya was the last seed to be uh planted for another flourish of roses to come up within their circle but that's not gonna happen <laughs> And in a sense, it don't really need to happen because those two do bring the drama. But that's all I had of the Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired tonight. Um, Eastern Standard Time, my time zone, which is Eastern Standard Time Zone here in Atlanta at 8 o'clock. And it was titled, um, Dad, where my paper at? Living on the Edge, I think it was. Yeah, Living on the Edge, Season 12, Episode 10. All right. Good night, guys. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, tell other people about it, about me. Share my videos and like my videos. And I will see y'all next time. Good night. Bye-bye.